everybody and welcome to my fifth Q&A episode. Now, sorry that this episode has been very delayed um, and that I haven't released any videos for a while. Um, right about a month and a half ago I got a new job which has taken up all my Wednesdays. Uh, so I haven't had as much time as I'd like to make videos and on top of that I've also, I'm in the process of moving house so I've really not had any time at all to do any videos for you guys which um which obviously i'm not very happy about i want to try and get a lot out as much as i can um but obviously work comes in the way now i have set up a patreon site and the link will be in the description below um and if i can get enough patreons then that means that obviously i can uh stop uh, working completely and concentrate on making videos for you guys so anyone who really kind of finds my videos valuable um, and the, then jump onto patreon uh, and you can kind of uh, provide support to me um, and hopefully we can get towards creating lots more educational content I really enjoy putting out these videos and answering all your questions uh, and creating tutorials as well um, anyway that's Let's jump in. Um, I'm probably still not going to have much time over the next few weeks, so I want to crack on and get some of these done. Um, the advantage of moving houses, I am going to have a kind of uh, soundproof recording studio kind of thing. I'm just going to soundproof for my new office, which will be good, and I've got a new microphone and stuff, so the, the quality of the video should be getting a lot better um, in, in kind of the next few weeks uh, unfortunately after next week I'm not going to have internet until mid-December so probably not going to see many videos from me then either but anyway um, I'll do what I can in the time that I've got uh, so uh, I've got five questions today I've been stacking them up over a while most of your questions I've kind of been answering uh, with just kind of a response on text um, but I will try and get around to doing more of these videos uh, so first question from Ian Moley, so Matt, thanks for these tutorials, I'm making good use of the skills I'm learning here. Uh, question, what is your background, as in how did you get good at Excel slash VBA databases, uh, did you get a degree in it, or learn on a job? Um, so uh, I never really learned VBA at school or in a course or anything, I learned it all uh, whilst in my job. Um, I work in finance, uh, so I've used Excel a lot, and then VBA, I just kind of learned and done a lot of it myself. Um, I've watched a few videos on YouTube, um, never really found anything that is quite as expansive. Uh, I don't mean to be big-headed, but um, obviously I've got a lot of VBA videos, so I wish I'd had that to watch uh, originally. Um, and then I also watched, uh, I'll put a link to it in a moment, but uh, read even Power Programming by uh, John Walkenbeck. Let me just see if I can bring it up on Amazon. Uh, so, Power um, So this book, I read the 2003 one. Um, so I put a link to that in the um, description. But that's a really good book. I read it on the train going back and forth to work uh, for about a month and a half um, and just literally read it cover to cover. I looked a bit stupid with a massive kind of reference book on the train, but, you know, I learned a lot from it and it's been very useful. Um, and that's how I kind of got good at things and just kind of used it for things in work and built it up over time. And then actually creating these videos was dead helpful in um, learning VBA because at the start of it I probably didn't know anywhere near as much as what I did at the end of it just because I had to kind of go through and make sure I knew exactly what I was talking about every time rather than just kind of doing it because that's how I've always done it. Um, so I find it, explaining and teaching it to other people actually makes you learn it a lot better as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a good kind of uh, background. Um, the next one, the login form can easily be bypassed by clicking the red X button on the user form. So any way to get around this, example, if anybody tries to bypass the login by closing the form, the sheet will inactivate or can the X button be removed completely? Yes, this is possible. Um, I've set up a little bit of code. So if we go into our user form, so I've just got a user form here. Um, it works on any user form. So if you go into the code, uh, and you want to select user form from this drop down and then query close from this drop down 
Um, and uh, you want to just set it so if close mode equals VB form control menu, then cancel equals true. Uh, and what that'll do, if I press play on this and we open up our user form, every time the user tries to click the cross, it's not actually going to work. Um, and you either need to have a button in there that they press, uh, like well, which will be your kind of login button that you've said in your example, um, or you can use control and pause break, which will put you back into here. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, I'll just get that code up um and leave it there for a few seconds so you can pause it and copy it across uh there we go um anyway so the next question is from lee grand johnson uh hi matt i know vba is vba regardless of the opposite application you're using but it doesn't seem useful to me in word as it is in excel that's likely because i've seen your videos teaching vba for excel and I'm just trying to figure out what to do with Word on my own. Uh, there's a lot that my company does in Word, and I'd love to have the same additional tools at my disposal. Are there any books or video tutorials you've seen that will help make VBA for Word as useful to me as it is when using Excel? Thanks. Um, so I haven't got any videos on VBA in Word, um, and I actually think I've only ever used it kind of once or twice. The thing with Word is that you very rarely want to do anything automated in Microsoft Word. You're writing a letter, you're making a CV. Um, main thing is for letters, or you're putting a kind of uh, paper together, or a kind of uh, kind of business uh, business case kind of thing. Um, so you very rarely need any kind of automation in there. Uh, and when you do need automation in there, then generally you use a mail merge, which is a really useful built-in feature of Word, which I do have a tutorial on. Um, so, yeah, I've I've never really found a use for using VBA in Word. You could use it for an interface. Uh, I would just use Excel. Um, it's got a lot more kind of capacity to kind of manage data and stuff transferring it through as a user interface um so yeah there's no real automation you need in word that kind of um uh like oh the auto fill or the um the kind of mail merges wouldn't do for you uh which is why i haven't done any videos and i probably won't plan on doing any videos uh if you know vba and excel then generally you can work out everything in word anyway so yeah um, probably not the answer you wanted, but yeah, I really, I really don't see the use for it in Word as much as you do in Excel. Uh, next question from Diana Wong. So hi, thank you for your video. I have a couple of questions. Need your help, please. How did you put dollar in the range as shown on the video all at once? When you drag down the first row VLOOKUP formula, the rows below copied exactly the same formula. But when I did it, the formula changes in each row. For instance, the range will be A3, D9 for the first row. A4, D9 for the next row, etc. Um, so the dollar signs are very simple. So let's say we reference A10 here. Now, this is what we call a relative reference. So it's relative to the cell you're in. So if I click and drag this down, then all of these are going to reference the cell kind of next to them. Drag it across, then you'll see that it goes across in the columns. Now, this is very easy to solve by just sticking a dollar sign before the A. Uh, and if you stick a dollar sign before the A, when we drag it across, you'll see that rather than updating, they all stay as A. Uh, and that's what's called an absolute reference. So that dollar sign there will make that one stay the same. Uh, and similarly, if we put a dollar sign before the number, uh, then drop this down, then they'll all stay exactly the same here. Um, and you can get rid of the dollar sign before the A, and then when you kind of drag across and drag down, then you'll see that the column's always changing, but then the number is always the same. So this would always reference the one at the top. Um, and it's very useful. I've got a tutorial on it that I'll try and drop in the description. Um, if I forget to, then just leave me a comment um, telling me I'm a fool. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, it's, it's very simple to do and you can do it very quickly is once you type in the A10 if you just press F4 then it will cycle between the kind of four different states that you can have um, 
which is very useful. Uh, and okay, so next question from Gloria uh, Carais. Uh, hi, thanks for these, they're very useful. Anyway, uh, I can never understand what I should use as double, as integer, etc. Is there any rule? Thanks. So, um, yes, there is. Uh, if you go through kind of my first kind of 20 videos, I go over I kind of all the main ones. Uh, but a double um, is any kind of number that has a decimal point. So we can do like 1.65464. Or uh, if we do an integer, then that can only be one, or two, or three, or four, or five. Uh, now the reason you'd use an integer over a double, you might be thinking, well, I can just have one point zero, and then that's going to be my integer. So why would I bother ever put an integer? Well, this you quite often want to force the user to only be able to put in a, well, not even the user, the code to put in a whole number. Uh, and also, it takes up less memory, so your computer program will run more efficient. Now, VBA isn't kind of, you generally don't have kind of efficiency problems as so much because it goes so much slower than any other programming languages anyway. Um, and the things you make normally don't require any kind of super efficiency because you're not doing millions of calculations. But I have created with some myself that do require doing kind of millions of processes and this kind of stuff really does take its toll if you don't do it properly. Um, so you've got kind of double integer, you've got string for text, you've got dates, all of that type. It's just telling the computer what type of information you're storing uh, and it's very important for what you do. So as you go through the videos it should explain all the ones you need to know like dates, time, worksheets, any kind of objects, even ones you can create yourself. Cool, but that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like these tutorials, then like I said, I've got my new Patreon account set up. Uh, check that out. Um, you can also uh, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. And if you really like the video, then subscribe on YouTube and you'll be able to see any more that come out. So thanks for watching and I hope to catch you soon.